Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all again in our channel that is Best Notes Tutorials. So this is my third video on Charles Lamb and uh, till now we have completed his uh, early childhood and his stay in hostel. How terrible it was to study and stay in hostel that we have already completed and the love affair which he had with the uh, few of the female members we did in our last video now today we will move towards family tragedy okay in my first video i have already told you all that uh, he had uh, his elder sister and elder brother as well but more trouble he received from his sister who was his partner in uh, writing as well okay but let us understand what were the tragedy that he had to encounter when he was a child. Okay, the time when uh, children bloom a lot. Childhood is the spring season of anybody's life. But here we can see the tragedy that he had to encounter now and then during his early phase. Okay, be it in hostel, be it at home. He was not at peace at all, we must say. Because... The tragedy was very grave. It was very serious. Okay. Mary had killed her own mother. Okay. That means Charles Lamb and Mary Lamb's mother. So what all things he had to undergo. Let's find out in this video. Family tragedy. Part 3. This video is part 3 on Charles Lamb. And today the topic is rather it's subtopic subtopic is family tragedy let's begin both charles lamb and his sister mary lamb suffered a period of mental illness here when he was a child both charles lamb and mary had to undergo mental illness however mary lamb's illness was peculiarly sorry particularly strong and it led her to become aggressive on a fatal occasions. Here you can see Charles Lamb's illness, mental illness was cured through medication. Okay, but Mary Lamb's aggressive nature had become very fatal. It was very dangerous sometimes. Okay, she becomes, she used to become uncontrollable, which could never be cured. On 22nd September 1796, while preparing dinner, Mary became angry with her apprentice. Apprentice is helper, okay? Roughly shoving the little girl out of her way and pushing her into another room. See, her aggressive nature had become so grave, okay? It had become so aggressive, she has become so aggressive that... She did not care for anyone. In her anger, she did not realize who was in front of her. Whether it was a little girl who might get physically hurt when she is shoving her away. Okay, when she is throwing her away. Okay. Now what she did? That's her mother, Elizabeth, began yelling at her for this. And Mary suffered a mental breakdown. As her mother continued yelling at her. Mother, it seems that she was a very sophisticated lady who did not like the act of Mary Lamb. When she scolded Mary Lamb continuously for her rude behavior to this little apprentice, then she became extremely agitated. And then she took a knife from the kitchen and then started heading towards her mother for killing her okay mary took kitchen knife she had been holding unsheathed it unsheathed sheath means cover of any weapon okay so here unsheathed means she took it out uh, from the cover of this and approached her mother who was sitting down now see she was not realizing whom she is trying to kill. It was none other than her mother. But in her illness, under the influence of her mental illness, she was not able to realize that. Mary, 
worn down to a state of extreme nervous misery by attention to needlework by day and to her mother at night, was seized with the acute mania and stabbed her mother in the heart with a table knife. Now see, another problem was that uh, this uh, we also have seen that some of the people, they don't like another people uh, eating with sound. Okay, there are people who eat by making a lot of sound which another person don't like and they become so much agitated. Okay, such kind of problem was there with Mary as well. Now what she uh, did here. See, she was extremely agitated or angry by mother's needlework which she was doing day and night. Okay, continuously she was doing this, which she did not like. Maybe she wanted attention from her mother. Maybe she wanted care from her mother. That is why when these two were combined, okay, this scolding of mother for uh, throwing uh, that little girl away and her day and night needlework, these two things had led to killing of her mother. Okay, so in her maniac state, in her phobiac state, she killed her mother with a table knife. Okay, so in MCQ, if it is asked that why she killed her mother, you have to write that she scolded her continuously, number one. And number two, she wo worked on her needle work continuously. Okay, she prepared some artwork continuously, which Mary hated. Okay, if other options are given that what she wanted from her mother, then you can write attention, care, etc. Which normally a child requires. Okay, let's move ahead. Charles ran into the house soon after the murder and took the knife out of Mary's hand. Now, it was too late when Charles Lamb arrived. And uh, what he could do, he could just take off the weapon with which Mary had killed her mother. Later in the evening, Charles found a local place for Mary in a private mental facility called Fisher House, which had been found with the help of a doctor friend of his. Now see, Charles Lamb also understood that it is very dangerous to keep Mary in their own house because she might kill other members as well. Therefore, at uh, that point of time, he found a mental hospital, private mental hospital, and that is called Fisher House. Okay, this might be asked in MCQ that what was the name of the private mental asylum which in which Mary Lamb was appoint, uh, admitted. Okay, so at that time you have to write Fisher House. Charles took over responsibility for Mary after refusing his brother John's suggestion that they have her committed to a public lunatic asylum. Now see, instead of treating her in private asylum, brother John Lamb suggested that she should be sent to public lunatic asylum, which Charles Lamb denied and he said that he will bear the responsibility, he will bear the cost and he will look after Mary there in private mental facility. That is Fisher's house all alone. Okay, so she was there. Lamb used a large part of his relatively meager income to keep his beloved sister in the private madhouse in Islington. Okay, so here Mr. Lamb was a dis determined brother okay who did not accept the suggestion of john lamb to keep her in private asylum maybe private asylum or private hospital for mental people were not up to the mark okay right now we can see progress is everywhere be it a government hospital uh, or any other small hospital it is up to the mark Okay, medicines are available, doctors are coming on time. But at that time, maybe there was no development, there was no proper system in public hospitals. That is why Charles Lamb did not prefer to keep her sister there. That is why 
he bore the cost and then she was kept in private asylum in Islington. Okay, please keep this thing in mind. With the help of friends, Lamb succeeded in obtaining his sister's release from what would otherwise have been lifelong imprisonment. Okay, here you need to understand that after the dedicated work of Charles Lamb, his sister was okay now. And that is why we received many poetries of Mary Lamb as well. Okay, and, and in her poetries, she talks about the contribution and the help of Charles Lamb as well as her mental illness and how she succumbed, how she overcame with that situation. Okay, so those things we find in Mary Lamb's work as well, which is a kind of inspiration to all the readers. Okay, let's move ahead. Although there was no legal status of insanity at the time, the jury returned the verdict of lunacy, which was now she was free from guilt of willful murder on the condition that Charles take personal responsibility for her safekeeping. Now see, obviously she had done a murder by killing her own mother, so she was guilty. But because she was a mental patient at that time, her, her plea was accepted and she was set free. But the condition was that Charles Lamb will be there with her to take care because somebody else should not be hampered, should not be uh, the prey of Mary Lamb. So Charles Lamb accepted the responsibility and she was okay in later life. Let's move to the next important point. The 1799 death of John Lamb was something of a relief to Charles because his father had been mentally incapacitated for a number of years since suffering a stroke. Now see, I have already told you in my first video that John Lamb and John Lamb is father as well as brother of Charles Lamb. The name is same. Okay, so here John Lamb uh, died, and it was a relief financially. Charles Lamb had suffered a lot. Father had to be treated. Mother was killed, and then uh, Mary Lamb had also be treated. Had also be uh, treated in private hospital. So it was a financial burden for him. Whatever he, earned, whatever he earned through poetry, that was not sufficient sometimes. Okay, so here it was a relief because a um, person, a family member, which had a lot of diseases was dead now. The death of his father also meant that Mary could come to live again with him in Pentonville and in 1800 they set up a share, shared home at Mitre Court Buildings in the temple where they would live until 1809. Now see, when his father was alive, it was a problem for uh, Charles Lamb to keep both under one roof because Mary was mentally ill and father had uh, several strokes okay so he could not see the suffering of mary okay and mary in her illness could not realize that what uh, her father felt for her okay so when he died when father of uh, charles lamb died it was convenient for mary to come and live there in pentonville this was the place in temple Okay, inner temple. I have mentioned earlier also, inner temple. Inner temple is the resident area, residential area. Sorry, uh, there was a part. Okay, it is not residential area exactly. This is the place where lawyers practiced. Okay, but there was a section for people who used to work there. So that is what mentioned here, and in that place. There was a villa which is 
Pentonville, where they lived until 1809. In 1800, Mary's illness came back and Charles had to take her back again to the asylum. Now, it was very troublesome for Charles to bear this. Every time Mary had to be taken to the hospital and he had to focus on gaining financial uh, help as well. So, it was a troublesome task for Charles. In those days, Charles sent a letter to Coleridge. Coleridge is S.T. Coleridge, okay? in which he admitted he felt melancholic and lonely, adding, I almost wish that Mary were dead. Now see, it had become unbearable, sending, uh, uh, you know, dealing with Mary now and then, um, taking her to the hospital, bearing finances, medicines, costs, etc., had become a very troublesome for Charles Lamb. That is why he uttered these lines for her own for his own beloved sister okay he could not live without mary but because of the situation he could not think of staying with her anymore so sometimes he wished that she is dead after she would come back and both he and his sister would enjoy an active and rich social life so here as we know both became great literary figures in later life so they were able to earn a lot okay in the beginning i told you that mary's illness remained lifelong yes that remained lifelong but there is a gap in between in that gap she wrote a lot and lot of poetries which helped her gain money a lot and Charles Lamb as well. So here her illness remained lifelong but in that trans uh, you know in that gap period in that vacant period she earned name and fame. That is what Charles Lamb mentions here and their uh, bad days or their gloomy days escaped from their life. Their, their London quarters became a kind of weekly saloon for many of the most outstanding theatrical and literary figure of the day now see when they became rich okay they could uh, follow saloon culture as well saloon culture means where people used to gather and they used to live a wonderful extraordinary life so theatrical performance were also done there and literary figures eminent literary figures like William Wordsworth, S.T. Coleridge and other contemporary writers and poets visited here. In 1869, a club, The Lambs, was formed in London to carry on their saloon tradition. So this saloon tradition or uh, the activities, okay, rich activities. Rich activities means performing uh, utterance of poetry, okay, and uh, mingling with other people this kind of culture was continued through this club the lamb okay the lambs means mr lamb charles lamb and mary lamb the actor henry james montague founded the club's new york counterpart in 1874 this club had become very famous that is why this rich actor founded a club in New York as well in the year 1874. Charles Lamb, having been to school with Samuel Coleridge, counted Coleridge as perhaps his closest and certainly his oldest friend. Now see, let me tell you one uh, adage or proverb which is said on friends. A friend in need is a friend indeed. So here it was Samuel Taylor Coleridge who proved it right. Okay, because Samuel Coleridge knew in and out of Charles Lamb and he helped him whichever way possible. Okay, so here he considers Charles Lamb considers Samuel Taylor Coleridge as his best friend. 
on his deathbed on his deathbed coleridge had a morning ring sent to lamb and his sister see when coleridge was about to die at that time he had sent morning ring to lamb and his sister that is mary lamb it is because he had bonding he had close bonding with both of them fortuitously charles lamb's first publication was in 1796 when four sonnets by mr charles lamb of the india house appeared in coleridge's poems on various subjects now here you need to keep in mind that this sonnet this poetry was not published in charles lamb's poetry okay it was published in coleridge's poetry remember it it might be asked in your question that who is the writer and where it was published it was published in coleridge poems okay in 1997 sorry in 1797 he contributed additional blank verse to the second edition and met the wordsworth william wordsworth and dorothy wordsworth on his short summer holiday with coleridge at nether stowe thereby also striking up a lifelong friendship with william now here he came across william wordsworth and his sister dorothy as well now both of them just like uh, charles lamb and mary lamb william wordsworth and dorothy wordsworth wrote a lot of poetry and when they were in saloon culture there they met with these two personalities uh, he met with these two personalities and then this association was lifelong in london lamb became familiar with a group of young writers who favored political reform including percy bysshe shelley william hazlitt leigh hunt and william home so here we know that Leigh Hunt was his classmate, and when he met with him and other young writers, he became impressed, and he wanted to join them. But he had to work somewhere. Okay, so he continued working as clerk for the East India Company and doubled as a writer in various journals, genres. His tragedy John Woodville being published in eighteen hundred and two. so what he was doing he was influenced by these new writers who wanted political reform and he worked as a clerk in order to earn money as well so both the things he did continuously being a writer writing poetry essays and at the same time he worked in east india company okay his first essay was john woodville keep in mind and publication date date is Uh, publication year is eighteen hundred and two. Friends, let's move to the next point. His farce, Mister H, was performed at Drury Lane in eighteen hundred and seven, where it was roundly booed. Now, here, first of all, we need to understand what is a farce. Farce is a play with humor. Okay. or you can say it's a humorous play a play which uh, imparts a sarcastic comment and then a play which asks us to smile laugh okay so mr h was a play by mr lamb and it was performed at drury lane the full name of drury lane is royal drury lane and it is in london uk okay and this play was performed at this theater in the year 1807 but this particular play was not liked at all by the audience that is why it was booed okay booed means to give negative uh, feedback okay in the same year tales from shakespeare charles handled the tragedies his sister mary the comedies 
was published and became a best seller for William Godwin's Child's Library. Now see, you need to understand few more things out here that Child's Lamb wrote few stories for children as well. Okay, and it was William Golding who was a journalist, a novelist by profession. He has kept juvenile library with him. Okay, juvenile. J-U-V-E-N-I-L-E. -E. Juvenile means children. Children's. Okay, juvenile library was there. <clears throat> uh, which was uh, constructed for especially children and there we have two extremely important work of Charles Lamb and that is Charles handled the tragedies number one and number two the comedies okay the comedies so these two his sister Mary the comedies these two are the things which are included in juvenile library by William Godwin and it became the best seller. Let's move to the next point. Fanny Kelly entertains from the work of Charles Lamb. Here we find few more work of Charles Lamb which were included in children's library. Entertains which is from the work of Charles Lamb. Okay. The original caption said, Mr. Lamb, having taken the liberty of addressing a slight compliment to Miss Kelly in his first volume, respectfully requests her acceptance of the collection 7th June 1818. Now, it was a request of Mr. Lamb to Miss Kelly, Fanny Kelly, to include his work in her volume. On, June, on July 20th, 1819, at age 44, Lamb, who, because of family commitments, had never married, fell in love with an actress, Fanny Kelly, of Covent Garden. And besides writing her a sonnet, he also proposed for the marriage. Now, see, at the age of 44, when he was in his later adulthood, he wanted to get married. And uh, at his proper age, when usually other people get married, he was occupied with uh, father's disease and then sister's disease and some complications with his own brother. Therefore, he could not think of getting married. But when he fell in love with Fanny Kelly, then he proposed her as well and he wrote sonnet. He wrote poetry on her, but she denied it. And prior to Fanny Kelly, we understood, we have read that uh, he proposed some other girls as well, but they also denied his proposal. She refused. She refused him and he died a bachelor. He married with no one. His collected essays under the title Essays of Elia. Now see, Elia is the nickname of Charles Lamb. Okay, If it is asked in MCQs, be bold, be smart, be confident to write that it is the nickname or the pen name of Lamb. Were published in 1823, Elia being the pen name Lamb used as a contributor to the London magazine. Okay. So Charles Lamb, who was usually called by Elia, for what reason we don't know, but he was called as Elia and this was the name which was used for Essays of Elia which became a masterpiece in later life. Okay, Not only that, he used it for other literary connections as well. Let's move ahead. The Essays of Elia would be criticized in the Quarterly Review. January 1823 by Robert Saudi, who thought it its author to be irreligious. Now see, Robert Saudi is also another uh, writer. He did not like the approach of Charles Lamb through his essays and he, and he criticized his work by saying 
by considering the writer as irreligious, the one who does not believe in religion. But what was his reply? Let's see. When Charles read the review entitled The Progress of Infidelity, The Progress of Infidelity, he was filled with indignation and wrote a letter to his friend Bernard Barton, where Lamb declared he hated the review and emphasized that his words meant no harm to religion. Now see, Charles Lamb, he loved Saudi, Robert Saudi, but when he criticized his work, that is, uh, Essays of Elia, then he could not stop. He said he, he conveyed his complaint to Bernard Barton, who was his best friend, one of his best friends, and he said that he never meant to be irreligious. According to him, the readers took it another way. Let's see what happened further. First, Lamb did not First, Lamb did not want to retort. Retort means to give sharp and, uh, you know, very powerful reply. Since he actually admired Saudi, but later he felt the need to write a letter, Elia to Saudi, Elia, Charles Lamb to Saudi, in which he complained and expressed that the fact he was a dissenter of the church did not make him an irreligious man. Now see. Uh, progress of infidelity. It means the person who does not have any faith in religion, lack of religious belief. So, Saude, Robert Saude had hinted, the writer Charles Lamb, that he was irreligious. But he said that even though he doesn't go to, uh, he is a dissenter. Dissenter means uh, the one uh, who is who disagrees the establishment of church. Okay, The one who is protestant even though he is a protestant he is not a religious it was written in elia to saudi essay okay a further collection called the last essays of elia was published in 1833 shortly before child's death also in 1834 samuel coleridge died now both the friends both the intimate friends died close 1833 and 1834. This also shows that their bonding was very strong. The funeral was confined only to the family of the writer, so Lamb was prevented from attending and only wrote a letter to Reverend James Gilman, a very close friend, expressing his condolences. Now see, in order to give condolence, he did not had opportunity he did not had opportunity to go and meet with the family members so he did it through words word has a lot of power okay the things that we keep inside our heart no one can see it but when we utter it through our writing through our letters then it becomes more meaningful which is done by mr lamb On 27th December 1834, Lamb died of a streptococcal infection, erysipelas, contracted from a minor graze on his face, sustained after sleeping in the street. He was 59. Now, see, let's understand what is this disease. This streptococcal infection is throat, throat infection. Okay, and erysipelas is uh, a severe skin disease so he suffered from throat infection and skin disease because of which he died at the age of 59 from 1833 till his death till their death sorry charles and mary lived at bay cottage church street edmonton north of London, now part of London Borough of Enfield. Now both Charles Lamb and Mary died and uh, there was a gap of twelve around 12 years between their death. But till their 
end time they stayed at bay cottage okay lamb is buried in all saints churchyard edmonton this is the place where he is resting now his sister who was 10 years his senior survived him for more than a dozen years she is buried beside him so at all saints we find two writers and that is mr lamb and mary so by this we have completed his uh, family tragedy we will continue with uh, his work which is very important for literary students so we will meet in our next video friends till then i hope you found it a bit helpful i hope you found it a very helpful so let me know whether it was good whether it was average or i need improvement anywhere just drop a message till then we meet take care and bye bye everyone all the best for your preparations thank you